who's got a complicated medical condition, but certainly could have followed an MSA pathway. Um, they all live all over the country, and one lives in Europe. Um, and I guess my question is, is there any thought to a hereditary component? Is it important for me to talk to my family members about uh, asking about being part of a sort of registry? They all have neurologists. And one, my cousin probably will pass very quickly from her. She's given a diagnosis of primary progressive aphasia initially, but it's progressed to what looks like MSA. Um, and she's in France. So I'm thinking if we need to get samples, records, brain tissue, all that, trying to be real practical about it, um, can you help me through that process if you think that that would be helpful to you? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think you, you raise um, a couple of very interesting points there. The first, I mean, we, we are not aware, at least in the Caucasian population, that MSA is hereditary. Number one, there are to search for genes of susceptibility. You know, you you can have certain genes that that make things more likely to happen. That doesn't mean to say they're definitely always going to happen. We do require big numbers, which is challenging for MSA because we we have to have sort of the right power to be able to get the right answers. The, the, the field of genetics in MSA is something that is, is sort of a hotbed of activity right now. And I know that there are a couple of centers that would, you know, are looking for blood samples, are looking at family histories and things like that. So I'd be glad to, you know, talk with you and maybe hope to hopefully direct you to some of those researches where I'm sure your samples would be very welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm not very good at math, so that was going to be our last question. Okay. Um, if we don't quit now, we're going to be behind the rest of the day. So I'm sure people would like to have maybe a bathroom break. Cindy, it's you. We'll get. We will put index cards on the tables during this break. You can write your questions, and we'll see that they're all answered before you leave tomorrow. So yes, you can have a short bathroom break, and when you come back, we're breaking into the support group meetings. So on the right, we will have our uh, patients on the right of the room, so you're going to move, and we'll have our care partners on the left. We know that you guys don't like to separate from each other. You'll be in each other's view, but you can each speak to your respective group leaders, and we're very happy that we'll have Carol Rabadou and Lisa Hale, professional social workers, to help with leading that session. So 10 minutes and come on back, okay?